Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where Roger and I have returned. Because it's Wednesday, that means it's Epic Comic Book Wednesday. Every Wednesday... What? What do you mean? You said you'd have us back on Tom. Roger and I have been away, taking a trip in Roger's time machine. But Roger assured me that we would be back in time for Epic Comic Book Wednesday. And it's Thursday? Great. It's Thursday. That means we're too late for Epic Comic Book Wednesday. I hope nothing else went wrong. We didn't change history again, did we? It's a danger when you travel through time and have adventures in time to sometimes change history. Jonathan Frakes, he's still, he's still president, right? What? You know, that's just beyond belief. Anyway, well, I guess we can't have, you know, the comic we were going to talk about for Epic Comic Book Wednesday. I was going to use this opportunity to whip out my giant size man thing again. I love to whip out my giant size man thing because we were going to talk about this. You know, every Wednesday, I'll talk about a comic book graphic novel or comic book subject. And Steve Donahue over on his channel will talk about the same graphic novel, comic book, or comic book subject. And I know Steve loves the man. He loves man thing. He just can't get enough man thing. He loved man thing all day, all night. That's what I heard about Steve. Anyway, we're going to have to talk about this another time because, you know, I, I, I don't want to talk about this on a day that Steve Donahue isn't around. Anyway, we're going to, I feel like I owe the viewers, my loyal viewers, a comic book video since we, I wasn't available because of somebody, I wasn't available for Epic Comic Book Wednesday. So today, I'm going to talk about something else. Let me, let me find something else to talk about. Hold on. Okay. So today, we're going to talk about an entirely different comic book thing, which is really awesome. And I got this idea from watching another channel, uh, watching Bob Freeman, Bob Freeman, Occult Detective. This is him right there. He wrote this book, Bob Freeman. He wrote Landon Connor's Occult Detective. Landon Connor's Occult Detective by Bob Freeman. And he has a booktube channel. This guy does. He has a booktube channel. And one thing he's doing this month, which I thought was unusual, but kind of awesome, is he is doing an event based on Marvel Comics Planet of the Apes magazine from the 1970s, which is not easy to get. And so I thought it was, you know, it was brave and audacious to do a booktube event about a comic book magazine from the 1970s that has only been reprinted once, or maybe tw some of it's been reprinted twice, but most of it's only been reprinted once. And it's not the easiest thing to get, this magazine. So we'll talk about it. But it was, Planet of the Apes magazine was magnificent. Marvel Comics, back in the 1970s, had a line of black and white magazines. Savage Sword of Conan was the greatest and longest lasting of these magazines. But there was also Dracula Lives and Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, I think was one of them. And a bunch of monster ones and all kinds of really cool black and white magazines. And they were a ton of fun. They were a lot of fun. And one of the best of the black and white magazines from, from the 1970s from Marvel Comics was Planet of the Apes. And if you were a Planet of the Apes fan, this comic book was amazing. It was amazing. So let's talk about it since it's so great. I don't have every issue of Planet of the Apes magazine, and I didn't want to dig them all out. So I just, I took out a few select Planet of the Apes magazine things, including the very first issue of Marvel Comics' Planet of the Apes magazine. This is the very first issue. And showing you this, you'll kind of see the format of this. And it has a beautiful cover. And now I have to remind myself who did the cover. The cover is Bob Larkin. Bob Larkin does the cover, and he does a he did a bunch of covers for these black and white magazines. 
beautiful covers. He did he did some beautiful covers for Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes, this magazine had some gorgeous covers. And this is the very first issue. First issue Phantasmagoria. This had an exclusive interview with Apes screenwriter Rod Serling of the Twilight Zone fame. And photos, features, and all new story strips of the greatest fantasy film series of all time. Now, Planet of the Apes never has been the most popular movie franchise ever, but it's very, very durable. And it's been, you know, they keep making Planet of the Apes movies. We've got a Planet of the Apes movie coming out soon, which looks really, really good. The past few Planet of the Apes movies have been great. Uh, and then the one coming out looks like it's going to be great as well. I love everything Planet of the Apes. I have since I was a little kid. So you can imagine how much I love this comic book magazine. This I bought originally used because it came out when I was three years old. This came out in 1974. And it was really cool. They the, always had a ton of photos from the films. There's a photo from Battle of the Planet of the Apes. All of the Planet of the Apes films had been out already by the time this came out but this came out right around the time that the television show came out this ran i believe from 1974 to 1977 it didn't even make 30 issues i don't think i probably should have checked you know i should check stuff before i just you know make videos but of course i don't anyway this was awesome and starts off with you know an introductory feature telling about how this magazine was created and it was created basically by Roy Thomas, the great Roy Thomas, who is responsible for bringing Conan the Barbarian to Marvel Comics. He also brought Planet of the Apes. Now it has, it always had two comic book features. Usually it was a comic book feature, which was usually Terror of the Planet, Terror on the Planet of the Apes, I think it was called. Let me double check. Yeah, Terror on the Planet of the Apes was the main feature. And then in the back, it would have a film adaptation. And all of the Planet of the Apes movies were adapted in about... And they were all six-part adaptations, I think. And they were wonderful. And they were interesting, too. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. So the first feature in this very first issue is Terror on the Planet of the Apes. This was written by Doug Mensch, who does most of the writing in this magazine. And this is illustrated by Mike Plug. So this is interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, Doug Mensch didn't give a crap about Planet of the Apes. This was not a favorite film of his. It wasn't a favorite series. It wasn't a favorite anything. Basically, Doug Mensch didn't care about Planet of the Apes. But Doug Mensch wrote everything, basically. He worked for DC. He worked for Marvel. He's probably best known now for his... Uh, for his series on Moon Knight. He, he brought Moon Knight and changed Moon Knight from being a, a villain from Werewolf by Night, from the Werewolf by Night comic book. Moon Knight showed up as a villain. And Doug Minch turned Moon Knight into a great comic book. I, I love Moon Knight. I think Moon Knight was really, really good. And I think Doug Minch's run was fantastic. And... I think that's probably what he's best known for now, although he wrote everything. Uh, and he wrote this, and he did a great job on this. Because he walked in on this book, and he's like, I don't care about Planet of the Apes. But he, you know, he knew the basic idea of the thing. And so he just went crazy. He just decided, I'm just going to throw anything I think of in this book. And so, you know, he knew about, you know, okay, apes run the society, and the humans are in a lower status. And there were mutants, you know, there's something about mutants going on. And so he created all of this stuff. I mean, he, he had whole new mutants that he showed up with. He had gigantic brains and jars that they were a different kind of mutant. And then he had frontiers, apes, apes, <laughs> Western apes. He had Viking apes. I mean, anything that popped into his head, he would, he would write a story about it. But basically, Terror on the Planet of the Apes was basically, in, in the start of the series anyway, about racism and prejudice. And it was excellent. And it had artwork by Mike Plug. 
And Plug was an artist who usually did horror comic books. He was known for Werewolf by Night. He did Frankenstein. He co-created uh, Ghost Rider. He was great for horror, for horror stuff. He didn't do superheroes so much because of his style. But he also did Planet of the Apes. And it was amazing. His art on Planet of the Apes was just incredible. And one of the things that's kind of a bummer about these things being hard to get now is just because, you know, the artwork that he did in this comic was just so good. It was an original story about a human character and a chimpanzee character and how they have to go on the run. And like I said, the artwork is just great. It's just great. And this was their main feature, Terror on the Planet of the Apes. But you always had articles in between. And so if you were, if you were a Planet of the Apes fan, you know, this was great because every issue of Planet of the Apes had different articles. And full of photographs from the films. All the films had been out by now, like I said. This particular issue has an interview with Rod Serling, which is really interesting. Uh, has a bit about the makeup. And it also has the adaptation of the first Planet of the Apes movie. Now, th there's a couple interesting things about this. So this was back in the days when, when they were doing this. They did... Who knows when the last time they had seen the film. I think Doug Mensch, I think, does the adaptation. And the artwork is by George Tusca. Who actually, you know, I, on Epic Comic Book Wednesday, Steve and I have given George Tusca a hard time sometimes. Because he, he liked to take over books that were failing. But I actually like Tusca quite a bit. And... He was, he's probably an underrated artist. And he does a great job on the Planet of the Apes ad adaptation. One thing that's clear is they didn't have the rights to the likenesses of the actors for the films. You know, usually when there are film adaptations of a movie, they usually come out right around when the movie opens. But this, you know, came out years afterwards. They didn't have the rights to any of the likenesses, which... I've heard, you know, is sometimes a big deal and sometimes not a big deal. So Tusca doesn't even try to make anything look, except for the spaceship. He makes a spaceship look like it. But he doesn't really try to make anything look like it does in the films. Uh, everything looks different. All the characters look different. And one of the interesting things is that he makes the apes look a little different, too. So... That is the basic format of the magazine. And then this was out of print. And it wasn't reprinted forever. I think some of the issues, or a few of the issues of Terror on the Planet of the Apes, were reprinted once. I think the first film adaptation was printed one, was reprinted once. But then you, we had to wait until these archive editions from Boom. I think it was, it was Boom. Yeah, Boom Studios came out with four volumes of Planet of the Apes archive editions where they reprinted every single comic book strip from the Planet of the Apes magazine from the 1970s. And they are gorgeous. They're reprinted just wonderfully. The first volume uh, reprints all, the whole series of Terror on the Planet of the Apes, which was the main feature in Planet of the Apes. This is the one with that great artwork by Mike Plug. It's just beautiful. Uh, beautiful work. And I think it probably, some of the work that he did on Terror on the Planet of the Apes was some of the best work he ever did for Marvel. It was just great. And weird, you know? The whole series was was pretty weird. And they did some creative things. Like, I think this issue was reproduced directly from Plug's pencils. This didn't have an anchor at all, if I'm remembering correctly, on this particular issue. And it, it just... It's just awesome. I mean, it's just an awesome looking book. This is where we have ape gypsies. The gypsy apes, you know. 
it was a different time, the 70s. The 70s were weird, and this comic book is very weird, but it's also glorious. So that's the first volume has that, but the second volume has the adaptations from uh, Planet of the Apes and Beneath the Planet of the Apes, the first two films. And here I'll show you... Uh, let me just jump in here. Let me see. If, yeah, yeah. George Tusker. Here we go. And he kind of makes apes not look like so much the apes from the films as he makes them look like Tusca apes. Apes apes as George Tusca would would draw them. And they look kind of cartoony at times, but I think it was I think it all looks great. Like I said, Tusca had some strengths and they are all on display in this film adaptation. It's really really good. And but he he only does the first film adaptation, I think. And then we have Beneath the Plan of the Apes. And the interesting thing about these film adaptations is that you know, they were working from the original shooting scripts. Who knows when the last time anybody who was doing these had seen the films. And so there are a lot of differences, a lot of differences between the stories that you find in Planet of the Apes magazine and the finished films. Uh, probably Battle for the Planet of the Apes had the, had the most differences, if I'm remembering right. There were whole scenes and things in Marvel's version of Battle for the Planet of the Apes that were not in the film at all. And there were also a bunch of other strips. And it was all really, really cool. Here we've got Conquest for the Planet of the Apes, uh, all the way through this series. The, the artwork was just fantastic. It was just really, really high quality comic book artwork. And then we have the fourth volume, and this wraps it up. This has some of the... This has Battle for the Planet of the Apes, has that adaptation, which was a little weird and a little strange. But really, really excellent, just as they all were. But it also has some other strange stories. The Future History Chronicles, which is which has a bunch of apes on giant ships, which was very unusual and weird. You know, there was some weird stuff in these comics. But they were, they were great. And which one's this one? Oh yeah, this is uh, Evolution's Nightmare, I think, is this one. Yeah, Evolution's Nightmare. Look at that. That's just so cool. Where we have like an ancient kind of, sort of an ancient style battle taking place on the planet of the apes at some point in the planet of the apes future history who knows when but it's just really really cool i mean yeah at this point the apes and the humans do not have nobody has guns so they're all fighting with swords and it's just excellent just an excellent little story yeah it's good stuff Unfortunately, you know, these reprint volumes are, they're so stupidly expensive now. They were originally 50 bucks each, so they were not cheap when they first came out. But now this can go for like 150 or $200. So it might actually be cheaper to try to get the original Plan of the Apes magazines. Who knows? Marvel recently got the rights back to at least reprint some Plan of the Apes stuff, and I'm Pretty sure they could reprint it all if they wanted. They're coming out with an epic collection. They already came out with this, which is a reprint of the Planet of the Apes color comic book. And all of that was, and it only lasted 11 issues, was a reprint of some of the material that was available in the original magazine. And it's the tiniest omnibus you'll ever see. They call it the, the Planet of the Apes Adventures Omnibus even though it's really tiny. And there were some new covers that were commissioned for this series. It has actually, this has this series has the distinction of having some of the worst Gil Kane covers I've ever seen on any comic book. Let's see if I could find one of Gil Kane's terrible covers. 
Now I'm looking for one. I won't be able to find it. Let's see. Oh, this is a ter this is a terrible Gil Kane cover. Gil Kane's usually great, but I, I pretty much I'm pretty sure he did all the covers for this like on a Saturday afternoon. I don't know. So this was all reprinted material from the the black and white magazine in color as a regular color comic book. But what they did is that since there was more room in the in the black and white magazine to get these stories into a color comic book, they just cut the hell out of them. So panels were cut, whole pages were cut. This is a, what you're getting here is not the whole adaptation that appeared originally. This is a very severely edited version. It's still pretty cool, you know, it's still pretty cool to see this as a color comic book. And, you know, Tuska's artwork still looks awesome, and I still think it looks, you know, good enough. But it in the original magazine, there was there was just so much more to it. If you look at them side by side, it's I mean this whole page was pretty much this page where the ship is crashing was turned into was pretty much cut and cut down to one page, and there's stuff like that that happens all throughout the comic book where certain panels are just edited out and they just kind of paste a much shorter version for this. But this is the only thing that Marvel has reprinted from their classic Planet of the Apes days. And so I'm hoping that Marvel has enough sense to reprint the black and white magazines, hopefully, hopefully in omnibus volumes, just so, you know, new readers can can look at this stuff, people who are interested. I mean, like I said, Mike Plug has some of his best work in Planet of the Apes magazine, and it's really hard to find this stuff. So anyway, that's Planet of the, Ape Ma Planet of the Apes magazine. I'll shut up because I've gone on long enough. What? Who wears a tie on a booktube video? This guy's crazy. Anyway, I will catch you next time.